Okay, so we have oh, three agenda. Uh, actually, let's let's see. Let's just go through the. Actually, Mitch, do you want to make your uh, announcement first? Sure, sure. I'll jump up front. Uh, so today is my last day at Google, but not my last day with the Istio project. Uh, I'm going to be sticking around with you all uh, indefinitely for the foreseeable future, but that does mean uh, I might be a little bit slow to respond to email for the next few days and my google.com email address will stop functioning. So I've included my personal email address and then I think you all know how to reach me on Slack. So I, uh, yeah, hit me up if you need help. Thank you, Mitch. All right. Uh, so next topic uh, up here. So I believe this uh, this is Huilong's topic. Yeah. Yeah, you can call me Steve. Yeah. All right, Steve. Oh, yeah. So maybe I can I can start this topic about the dual stick uh, uh, support in East two. So uh, in this topic, uh, there there are three uh, items for this topic. The first thing uh, uh, I want to uh, I want to say that uh, the dual stick uh, support in East two I, I think it will known uh, in the East two community and. Um, I think uh, the first uh, uh, the first thing I think we will go through the uh, the solutions for the dual stick support. Uh, in fact, we have two uh, design solutions for the dual stick support in East two. Uh, there is the initialized design uh, uh, here. Uh, so uh, maybe I need to share my screen the first. Please do. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Can you see my screen now? I, it's coming. Yep. Yeah. It's on my way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how about now? Uh, yep. no, no, wait a minute. I I think I I'm wrong. Then uh, I'm wrong. And okay. How about this one here? Can you see my the the uh, the design dog here? You can. No, we don't see a design. I just see right a now. stop sharing view. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, tab. Oh yeah, I should uh, I should use the tab. Okay. So I share my in Intel. How about now? Can you see the uh, design doc now? Yeah, yes. let me see. Uh, I see it, Steve. Okay. Uh, yeah, I so see a screen where you says share your entire screen. I, I still see your GVC view, Francis. I think it would be helpful if you stop sharing the meeting notes. Ah, I see, yeah, that'll allow Steve's to pin. All right, I have stopped sharing. <clears throat> Steve, are you still with us? Oh, here we go. Yeah, he had two pit things pinned. It is. It seems that I can share my uh, entire Intel screen, and maybe. Uh, Steve, is this a public doc? Uh, do I have access to it? Yeah, I, I will give you a link. Yeah, if you just. Oh wait, actually, it's coming. Yeah, there okay. we go. We see it. Okay, that's great. So uh, I think we can go through the uh, design doc. This is the first uh, uh, initial design doc, uh, uh, and we uh, co-work with Aspen Mesh, 
and they also provide the uh, solution here. Uh, the first, uh, uh, we can, uh, we, you can see that from this uh, fig, uh, figure, we can uh, see the uh, uh, overview the uh, the design doc design here. Uh, according to the uh, current uh, issues implementations, uh, there are some uh, virtue uh, out. Uh, virtue our band inbound and uh, clusters so the basic uh, principle for this uh, design is that the initial design is that we will add some uh, duplicated listeners for the issue, for issue to support the new stake that means the listener including the in virtue inbound uh, outbound and the rotors and the clusters of this uh, uh, a risk core resource of Istio can have the duplicated configurations in uh, uh, which will, can be uh, generated in Istio and dispatched to the uh, envoy. So you can see that this is the first uh, in, uh, in initial design doc here. And uh, in fact, uh, we have uh, completed the code change for the dualistic support. So uh, 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 dual stakes uh, support in experimental uh, branch in uh, East two, and you can see in the uh, in the community. Uh, however, uh, they also have some uh, concerns uh, from uh, John and uh, Rama and uh, Zhonghu and some some maintainers, networking maintainers, because you can see from here all these these config, uh, configurations. Uh, for the uh, resource are duplicated, and uh, this will, uh, you know, double uh, the double the uh, enlarge the uh, configuration in for the sidecars. So uh, this this maybe uh, has some uh, concerns from these maintainers. So we also have some uh, have some optimization additions on this design doc here. So uh, let's see another. Not let's say another, uh, another doc documentation. Sorry, can you still see my screen? Yep. Okay. May I will, I will, I will open another uh, design doc. This design doc is also uh, 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 it's very similar with the uh, initial design doc, but we have some uh, changed. It's personally for the design doc. This the same same thing is here, and beside we uh, beside I introduce the design here. I I need to uh, maybe we need to go through uh, issues I opened in the uh, uh, institute community community here. In this issue, I record some uh, some uh, dis uh, there are some descriptions for the design here. We uh, optimize the solution here. There are two parts for the uh, for the dual support, and the purpose for the new design is that we want to reduce the uh, new complicated configurations for the uh, for the dual support. So we uh, we uh, split all the dual stick in two two parts. The first part is downstream part. That means uh, some. Uh, you can see in the or, uh, initial doc here, it's a downstream part about the uh, listener uh, listener configuration. Okay, sorry. No. Okay, here. Let's let's come back to the issue. Yeah. Yeah, it's a downstream part, and the, for the downstream part, we have a we we need to achieve these uh, features. That means multiple addresses should be held in every uh, listener here, and this uh, this part uh, will be uh, support uh, have been supported in envoy, uh, and I and this part uh, I also invite the. Uh, Envoy uh, developer in this meeting. It's my current uh, Alex Xu. 
And if you have any questions, you, uh, I, I think uh, she, she can, Alex, she can give, give more details in, in this part on how the envoy implement the support multiple address per listener. So this is the downstream part. And another uh, part is about the upstream part. That means that we can, uh, uh, the envoy can smart, there is a smart way to pick up the endpoints uh, based on the cluster in upstream. So, and also they will in, include, uh, include some uh, issues and API changes. And all the uh, smart way will uh, implemented by the bind config here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is wait a minute. Yeah, bind config here. And all of these uh, two parts can be helped to uh, achieve the do stake support. And so let's go back to the uh figure here and you can say it's very different from the uh uh our uh, initial design doc the one listener for example for the virtual unbound there uh, there is the original uh address for zero dot zero and one five zero zero one and they will also uh, uh, add an additional address and of of course, this part can be uh, implemented by the envoy, and issue will help will uh, will help to uh, generate the configuration. It's very for the additional address. It's a IPv6 uh, ad addresses for the virtual outbound. The same uh, the similar for the uh, virtual inbound here, additional address. Besides that, we also need to uh, use this. So this part is about the upstream part. Besides the virtual inbound or outbound listeners, we also have some uh, rearing endpoint uh, outbound listeners and, and here. So this this all the additional addresses about the uh, downstream part of the uh, of the dual stake. And so another part is about the uh, upstream part, as we ha I have mentioned in the issue here. Okay, uh, sorry, it's already it's very easy to close it. Close it. it issue. Uh, yeah. So this is about the downstream here, and for the part uh, for the uh, upstream it here we uh, we you we use the uh, inbound um, bind conf configuration options of the envoy to support the upstream part add the extra source address here we will include uh, as you know the 15006 it's about the you know the, it will capture all the uh, uh, traffic traffic network traffic and then we are do the redirection to the real uh, endpoint here. So this is about the uh, the basic uh, basic idea to for the design for the uh, sub, uh, dual stake support design. And be uh, so. Uh, do you have any questions for the design here? You, you know, the first thing that we go through the uh, to design here. If, if if there is no questions, so we, oh, so, okay. Uh, yeah, so we the downstream IP family is always the same as the upstream. Is that the case? I think Steve might have dropped out when he stopped sharing. He'll be right back. Yeah, are you? I, I see you joined. Can you hear me though? Or? Hey, are you back? Steve, can you hear us? Uh, yeah, Steve, yeah. you're on mute. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, my question was, if you missed it, is the upstream IP family and the downstream IP family, those are always the same? They're tightly coupled? Sorry, wait a minute. Sorry, uh, 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 John, can you repeat your questions? Yeah, my question was, are this, is the downstream and upstream IP families tightly coupled? They're always the same? Uh, yes, if you are in, uh, in fact, for now, the uh, for the downstream and upstream, all the capture mode are um, uh, it, it, uh, out, uh, out detections, you know? And if you are uh, in a dual-stick clusters and this, uh, uh, detection is automatically uh, be uh, handled. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not certain that makes sense. If I get, let me give an example. Let's say I have a product page service in the cluster. It's dual stack. And then I have, I don't know, github.com. It doesn't support IPv6, right? And I have a virtual service that redirects all requests to product page to github.com. Now, when I make a request to it, I'll do curl product page. I'll do a DNS request, get an IPv6 address, connect to the IPv6 address. Um, Envoy now will match that. Well, IP was redirected, et cetera. But in the routing, we pick the outbound cluster. It'll be github.com. Now, github.com doesn't have any IPv6 addresses. It only have IPv4 addresses. And so now we'll try and pick an IPv6 address. There will be none, and they will fail. Is that the case? Oh, yeah. Uh... Uh, John, for your concern, yeah, I I understand uh, some about the uh, this, and I think I can give some uh, short demo about this in later. Is that okay? Um, I mean, I'm not like, is that how it works? Is that it, the request will fail? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It seems that there are so many. I'm not sure why there are so many. Okay. Uh. uh so. Uh, f f sorry. Uh. In fact, as you know, uh, for the uh, for now, the solution is just for the normal uh normal issue services. Am I right? Yeah. Cool. Uh let me ask a slight variation of, of John's question. Uh, if you if you talk to a service VIP, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you 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 it's captured whatever it, it's uh, IPv4 IP4, but the EDS response will include both IPv4 and IPv6 addresses mixed together, no, or only one type. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, for this part, uh, I think uh, if you if we are in for now, uh, I'm not sure about the service and uh, uh, service entry part. You know, uh, I also uh, have a, I also have an issue about the service and service entry for this part, and there is also some issue. I think Alex maybe uh, focus on this part. However, for now, uh, there is no. Uh, impacts on the you know there is no impacts on the uh already uh, implement uh, service and self entry behave but um, um i think if the if the uh, for the service entry uh i think it it will keep the same behavior if the service entry in this uh ipv4 uh, clusters as you know uh, for the service entry, it will always uh, uh, generate the IPv4 route and uh, listeners for yeah, the self entry the because uh, and endpoint. Yeah, yes. yeah, for the endpoint part, I think basically, if, uh, basically uh, based on the current solution, the self entry maybe cannot support the IPv6 for now. Yeah, I'm just talking about a service, not a service entry. If I have oh, a yeah. page, what does the EDS look like? Yeah, for the uh, for the service, um, but uh, for the service, we need to separate uh, the different products. First is about the normal issue service, am I right? The second is about the uh, headless is in the uh, in the uh, issue. For headless part, I think we can keep the uh, the current behavior 
uh, before the uh, Alex uh, helped to fix the bug about the dream connection. But for the uh, Istio, normal Istio service, I mean, the, the service in the Istios, it can be, uh, you know, this depends on the, the user, how the user deploying their service in, in the uh, dual stick cluster. If the service is the IPv4, uh, depro owning depro deployment, yeah. In this in this situation, they all they can for another another situation is about the dual stake series, and I think this they can be uh, connection together, uh, te connection between both of them. Even it is the IPv4 owning service to the IPv6 owning series, yeah. So I can I can give some demos. Uh, later, or you you can see the demo if 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 uh, if okay. I, okay. Uh, or, or they, yeah. Yeah. I still feel like I didn't get an answer to my original question though. If the downstream request is IPv6, can the upstream request use an IPv4 address? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's okay. And okay. I so can... they're not tied to each other. Yeah. And yeah. If it's a dual stack service on the upstream, then let's say there's just one pod. The EDS will have two IPs, v4 and v6, right? Mm -hmm. How do yeah. we pick which one we use? Maybe I, I think the demo demo can show can show more uh, show more inform information for you. Uh, I hope I can I answer the question correctly. I think uh, John uh, is asked about uh, uh, whether the IPv4 request go into a IPv4 endpoint and the IPv6. Uh, requires it go into the IPv6 endpoint? Is that the question? Uh, yeah, well, I'm not saying whether, yeah, that's my question. Is that the case, or are they decoupled? Yeah, yeah, so they are decoupled. It's based on the uh, involved cluster, lot of them choosing which one endpoint. Then uh, in what we choose a corresponding IP version uh, and the uh, local address for this endpoint. If the uh, endpoint is IPv4, so I choose the uh, IPv4 local address and I'm making a request. That means so it, is it just load balancing between v4 and v6? Yeah, yes. There, yeah. Are, there is originally require a uh, requirement about a uh, IPv4 request uh, going to IPv4 endpoint, but in the original or original uh, info issue discussion uh, in there, but. Uh, so no nobody can clear that use case. So we decide uh, in new side we decide uh implement a simple version first without a couple uh couple the downstream and the upstream version together. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I I I think I can give a demo and it will it will be, be help us to understand what will uh will be. Can you see my screen here? Yeah. Yeah, just one quick note before the demo. Um, if we're load balancing across them, we should make sure that we add each endpoint with half of a, half the weight of a normal endpoint. Um, otherwise, dual stack pods will get more traffic than not dual stack pods. It's a bit more complicated, unfortunately. I mean, depending on who's calling, it may need to be twice or maybe even once. It, it's it's a very that's true actually yeah <laughs> I mean maybe, maybe we should change Envoy then to be smarter about knowing that yeah one one thing is has two addresses right for for mm -hmm. Z tunnel for Z tunnel definitely should take uh, 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 you know uh, you know more uh, more careful I mean design based uh, to 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 make sure we identify you know one particular node has two IPs or multiple IPs or not because it's even the IPv6 addresses you can have multiple prefixes and it's it gets it's a complicated topic. Okay. So I think I see the uh, comment here, and yeah, maybe maybe oh uh, John, you 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 mentioned that uh, maybe we need to uh, simplify the in uh, inbound pass uh, pass through. Do you mean that we uh, there is no? Uh, it, it's unnecessary for us to. Uh, add the uh, you know here for the no right now we have we have some filter chains and clusters that are 
v4 or v6 specific yeah um, so with all these new additions we can just collapse them into one mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so we can just make that one cluster basically yeah that, you, that's, you that's may, a small thing you, just a minor comment yeah 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 they, they, both of these uh, two is unnecessary for us now yeah i think Maybe we also can we also can uh, merge these two uh, inbound pass through cluster into one. Am I right? Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I will. I will. Uh, I, I think uh, it can be uh, merged into uh, into one. Yeah. So maybe now I can uh, uh, I can give give some. Uh, some uh, demo here, and then you can see that this is the uh, uh, configuration for listeners and for the bind uh, bind configuration here. Here, uh, yeah. So I think I can give some uh, demo here in my POC uh, POC in my environment. Can you see my uh, Can you see my terminal here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, I I build a, a build a dual stack image based on the uh, op optimization uh, op optimization uh, the solution here. Uh, it's about two hours ago, and so the first thing I will uh, install um I install an issue. and I also will uh will give some uh ex explanation for the demo. Uh, there is a sample sample server. The sample server uh, is uh, uh, provided by Aspen Mesh Jugbo, and it's a uh, uh, it. These servers can uh, listen uh, both on IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Uh, it it can be a server, and it also can be a client. Okay. There is no uh, there is no uh, any difference for the uh, used to he uh, for the used to. Uh, installation and uh, because other uh, uh, other uh, uh, two uh, model can be out detection detected, and uh, I will uh, I will uh, I will in, uh, deploy the sample server in three uh, in three part. The first part is that you can see that I will. Uh, uh, deploy as IPv4 sample server in the namespace IPv4 and uh, IPv6 of this IPv4 owning and IPv6 owning and uh, uh, also about uh, another is uh, uh, in dualistic uh, namespace. All of this, uh, all of this can be hit, can uh, can be seen by this. And you can see now uh, there are three service and deployments uh, in different uh, different namespace with the different uh, uh, IP families. IPv4 have the IP uh, uh, in the IPv4 namespace and dual stack. Uh, so uh, I will go uh, the first thing that I will go through here. I will uh, get into uh, the demo is about it. All, all the demo is about it. here is about the weekend in, in, inside the service mesh. I will get into the IPv4 owning uh, part. And then I will call, uh, well, I will call the IPv, IPv6 owning service. And you can see that the the service for this uh, for uh, for the IPv4 service is just about owning one IPv6 address, but the endpoint also uh, have two of them. And then you can see here, yeah, of this. Uh, uh, this call have got got the uh, response from the IPv6 address now. Yeah, it's very uh, different from the uh, design uh, or original uh, original design uh, original issue here. If I <coughs> I am in the uh, inside the mesh, 
the IPv4 client uh, want to call the IPv6 owning a simple server, uh, it can be available, but it will skip the sidecar. Even, even the IPv6, uh, especially it's very interesting that IPv6 client inside of the mesh, and when they call the IPv6 uh, sample, owning sample server, and it can be available, but it also will skip the sidecar. I said uh, skip the sidecar means that there is no IP tables for the IPv6 request, so it will go through by the uh, Kubernetes, just Kubernetes service node balance. So in here, I uh, we can see that we we can get uh, we can get the response from the IPv6 uh, uh, servers and all the uh, server uh, traffic are get uh, get through the uh, envoy. Besides that, we also can get through the dual stack. And the dual stack have two uh, uh, two modes. The first mode is uh, is that. Uh, the dual stick with the IPv4 family at their first at their at their first IP address or IPv6 at their first address. So in the different in in my demos, you can see that for the dual stick, I'm uh, I set the IPv6 address at, at their first address of the uh, sample server. However. In this situation, it can be it can be also be uh, it, it be available here. Yeah. So this is about the IPv6 uh, servers getting to the IPv6 or dual stack. IPv4 to the dual stack yeah. one. Mm hmm You mean uh, sorry? Just do the same curl command, but uh, multiple times. Same name as Maze. Yeah, no, exactly what you did, but do it multiple times. The curl command to the dual stack server. You mean that I, I need to call multiple times? Yeah. Yeah. OK, so it is load balancing across different IP families. Um, actually, no, it doesn't seem. OK, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah. Also, we uh, we also can. Get into the you know uh this in the six uh in IPv6 owning uh, part, and get into the uh, IPv6 owning or dual stake, and of this situation I have I have tested all the situations yeah, and uh also I also do some this is a very simple uh, simple uh, example in fact I do much more uh, another complicated situation. Uh, a you use case here, but this this simple can help us to understand the two six things. Yeah, you know it's very uh, very strange that when I when I do the uh, uh, test, it's very strange that even an IPv6 client to the IPv6 uh, server, it can be available, but it will skip the set car. I think that's because uh, the IPv6 uh, IP table. Uh, in, uh, and are not applied in the sidecar. That's the root cause for the skip sidecar. So, based on this, uh, based on this, uh, uh, on this uh, test, oh, yeah. sorry, I so I change I change it here and uh John you also have some comments about this uh, issues here it's version for the in it's pressure uh, for the enable IPv IP uh, enable the inbound IPv6 I think this is the root cause yeah so I I said here this is about this PR yeah, my concern with that was not the actual code itself. It was that mm -hmm. the IP tables, like you're bundling two changes, and this is like a ginormous change here, even though it's very few lines of code. Mm -hmm. um, like that needs a feature flag, that needs its own PR dedicator reviewing it. Uh, like yeah. that's that's going to impact every single user of Eastio and change what traffic is redirected. So 
it's not something that yeah. could be you know slipped in on a yeah. unrelated PR without a future flag. Yeah, and it's the end. Uh, yeah, I I think we need to uh, get more get more information here. Once this uh once this flag is enabled, that means we will capture some uh, other traffics. It's uh, as John mentioned that that's about this part. In in the use case three, we can see here, uh, all the IPv6 uh, IPv6 owning sample servers. They will, yeah. Uh, they cannot be, uh, they cannot be. Uh, the traffic cannot be go through the sidecar. That's because uh, the the root cause should be the in, uh, ensure enable IP inbound IPv6. I yeah, because this in this uh this flag will impact the uh, IP tables, and uh yeah some. Uh, IP IPv6 uh, uh, IP table rules and uh, enable the you know apply some IPv6 uh, uh, device. Yeah. So the, this this is the key uh, flag. If we enable this one, then we will capture the IPv6 traffic here. However, I also give some uh, impacts. Uh, impact analyze here in fact uh, there are two points the first is there is no uh, impact for original uh, ipv4 traffic because uh, for the ipv4 traffic all of them are uh, all of them have the same behavior yeah that's that's the part that i had an issue with i i don't think that's true just because your cluster is a v4 cluster doesn't mean it can't do v6 traffic to other services Mm -hmm. So that's why I was so concerned about the PR. Oh, yeah, is you're actually yeah, impacting yeah. every Easter user, not just people that are doing dual stack. So yeah, and yeah. I uh, how 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 we support VMs. How does it work on a VM if you if you deploy this on a VM? Because VMs may have multiple IPv6 addresses on multiple networks. Some of them may be reachable. Some of them not be reachable. Uh, it, it's it's a bit more complicated there. Yeah, yeah. For VM, are you breaking them? I mean, they are working, or 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 they are broken by this PR. Yeah. Uh, for this for this part, uh, I think uh, the first is, uh, the first first one is that as uh, John mentioned. Yeah, for the IPv4, there should be some impacts because I, I have I have shown you the demo. IPv4 owning service can. Uh, uh can ex can access the ipv6 only service yeah that that's the impact one of the impact yeah and no, for the vm yeah no, the, the impact though is that before no v6 tra traffic went through Istio, and now all of it does right so mm -hmm. it's, yeah so it's, it's not just about access it's that there's traffic that might have been outbound that we were not capturing and by capturing it we could now change the behavior of that traffic without any user intent yeah. being specified yeah, so this actually needs to be the very very last dual stack pr dual stack needs to be 100 percent production ready before this pr can be merged at least without a off by default flag right uh, i mean let me put it different way any new change any f behavior change should have a featured flag should be off by default that's that's kind of the rule we had always uh it's not about adding the code or not it's just putting a flag to, to uh, off by default and users want to use it turn it on test it and Next release, we can discuss if we want to change the default. So that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I understand this will change some capture mode and service, uh, the, the, uh, the service behavior. Mm, but I think maybe we can, uh, we can think that, for example, in this situation, even if the ipv6 client can uh, cannot yeah can the, the the traffic cannot go through the uh, sidecar i think in this this should be a this should be changed uh, yeah I, I i don't see our policy in general is that we do not make changes in behavior without a process where we first have a flag then it goes gets tested only people opt in and then we, we, we change it i mean it's not a discussion if it should be changed or not be changed it's a discussion mm -hmm. of the process to change and the process starts with you know 
enabling this new feature with a flag turned off by default. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. after it is tested, we can discuss it. We don't jump straight to making behavior changes because it's too risky. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you. I mean, eventually, I mean, with a lot of things need to be changed, but we need to take it gradually and follow the processes, basically. Yeah. Um, I can I can give some explain about this flag is here. That means once the uh, port IP include both IPv4 and IPv6 address, that means uh, the IPv4 and IPv6 IP table rules can be should be or will be applied in the no in the port in inside the port inside the port and inside the car. The original right. behavior. That's, mm. that, that's what we're trying to say is we can't do that. We have to make it an explicit user opt-in because it's not safe, right? We're changing the behavior of Istio, which is a stable product rolled out in production, for 100% mm -hmm. of users. And that's enabling untested experimental code that right. has to be behind a feature flag. And regardless of, of the change for users, this needs to go through the feature maturity process. Right. So this needs mm -hmm. to be launched as experimental or alpha first, which means always disabled by default. Uh, mm -hmm. And then once we yeah. get some feedback on utilization, we can discuss moving to beta. OK. In fact, uh, how about like this? Uh, uh, Zhong Hu have given some comment here. Maybe uh, we can import a flag. And once the flag uh, are set, that means, for example, the dual stack flag other yeah, other that's what we've been yeah. trying to say yes okay if if that's okay uh, if the user will uh, enable this flag then uh yes. yeah okay yeah. okay i will i will go i will uh, i will use this one e e because you know for their initial design doc we use the flag yeah okay i will add add this flag for the dual stack yeah and um, thanks, Steve. We we should probably also work on getting an enhancements page up, showing the progress on dual stack and tracking its maturity through releases. I don't think that's there's any rush. Just before one seventeen ships. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I uh, maybe uh, maybe I think uh, we can you know uh, we can. Uh, Especially for this PR, once this PR are merged, and that means that the normal H2 service can be uh, can be support the dual stack. And I will, yeah, you know, add the uh, add the flag for this. Right. So I'm not yeah. sure. So Enjoy maybe first uh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, you can go first. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I have a, a meta comment here. Uh, this whole IPv6 dual stack, and you know, it's very complicated. I mean, for a user, I'm not sure how 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 uh, because again, there is all the weights that are affected. There are all kind of multi network issues. How many IPs? And it, it's 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 a pretty complicated feature. How how do you do? We have any consideration about you know the UX documentation? How will users debug interact with this feature and uh, should we explore maybe yeah. hiding it, hiding it completely? Basically, just users, for example, assign some IPv6 only and and treat it as you know the entire network IPv6 from the user perspective, and we do this translation behind the scene, kind of uh, and 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 not expose too much to the user in terms of uh, because I, I, I'm concerned how many people understand dual stack subtleties and 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 all the other. Uh, implications in as, as a regular user yeah that's a good uh, good uh, good question i also in fact for the ux part i think uh based on the optimization uh, solutions uh there will be um, less uh change in ux tools but however you know uh i think we we need to consider consider a situation is about uh is about that the user need to understand the dual stack or IPv4 and IPv6 things, because you know, I think the users need to aware that their series are deployed in IPv6 or IPv4 or dual stack, because all this different behavior or uh, 
or you know behavior uh, de depends on uh, depends on the user's behavior you know for the service it's version for the kubernetes service uh, yaml Okay, let me see. see. Uh, this is not a German. This is something we need to consider before we get to production and, and, and you know, we need to consider the UX and, 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 and evaluate if we have some any options to simplify a bit for the users. If we are confused mm -hmm. by dual stack, I, I, I suspect users will be even more so. Yeah. Yeah. Besides that, I think uh, another thing is about uh, the, you know, the VM service entry. I think all of these uh, features or all, all, all of these uh, scenarios, we need to, uh, we need to uh, support them one by one. I think it's, a, it's also a long term. Yeah. Uh, hi, Steve. Uh, for this yeah. feature, can you pro uh, you know, write a user guide and publish on Istio IO? Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, I will. Uh, I will discuss this uh, with the uh, uh, the Aspen Mesh Jagbo, and we, in fact, we plan. We are planning to uh, write a blog or yeah, or some user guide uh, about these things. Uh, yeah. I will. I, um, in fact, we have some regular um, regular meetings for discuss the uh, do stake without per match. Yeah, I will. I will mention that. Thanks. But, uh, yeah, I had some more questions about the load balancing and family selection behavior. Um, it seems quite odd to load balance across v4 and v6. Um, is there prior art for that being a good idea? I, like, for example, I just deployed a dual stack cluster without Istio, just in Kubernetes. Uh, and that's not the case. If I send, you know, v4 is always v4, v6 is always v6. Um, I'm worried that we're changing the Kubernetes behavior, which is something that we try not to do. Uh, John, I think that's that's a bit debatable. Uh, yes, I agree with you in, on Z tunnel, and, and and we should not change the default behavior. If, if Kubernetes defined it this way, we need to obey it for Kubernetes. But in the wild, I think it's pretty common to have you know six to four, four to six. I mean, it, it's not uh, it's not uh, it's kind of I, Kubernetes my is concern is not actually necessarily changing the family. It's that we're changing it on every request, right? Um, but what what would you do? I mean, if you have one class well, like, before, I, one I mean, on the service, like the service has an order, it's an ordered list, right? So uh, why load balance? Why not just pick the the priority or uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with you on Kubernetes. But Kubernetes is I think a bit weird. If, if you go to Google.com, depending on the client, you hit Google.com, but inside everything is IPv6. So it's never basically you switch. Uh, so it's it, it's not really uh, an option because in some cases all services will be all servers will be IPv6 and all clients will be IPv4. Yeah, I guess I just mean if we have, we know one thing has two IP addresses, right? Yeah. Yeah, another thing. We should thing pick one of those IP addresses. How we pick it, I don't know. That's, yeah, that's like, load balancing between the two seems weird. Yeah. yeah. In, in fact, uh, uh, John, I, I, I think uh, uh, when I touch uh, when I touch with some ISP uh, company and uh, city company, in fact, they if once they uh, deploying a uh, dual stack clusters and deploying their uh, their application or service in these uh, clusters. That means uh, they want to the use uh, they want to ignore the client because the, uh, the 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 service provider cannot control the client what 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 kind of the IP families the 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 client user use so. The, yeah. yeah, I'm not saying that we should use the client's family to determine the upstream family. Um, that doesn't actually even make sense if we're not if we're doing like different routing rules, right? 
Um, but it doesn't make sense as well to load balance between v4 and v6, in my opinion, for the same like the same pod. We, like there's a preferred address, and we should just use that, which is probably the v6 one. But maybe it's the v4 one if they say that's the preference. I would do yeah. the v6 so one uh, as a default and not give one given on choice. I mean, if IPv6 is available, use it. If not, not. I would say that. I mean, maybe that is still the best case. But in the Kubernetes API, you can pick. So like, we're not giving them the choice, but it's already there in Kubernetes. So maybe we should respect that. I'm not certain of that, but. Well, the requirement is to obey Kubernetes back when or wherever they are there. So I don't think we have a choice, at least for, for Ambient. But then we do the same thing for Istio. Yeah, in, uh, in fact, uh, we use the dual stick because uh, when um, once the dual stick are ena is enabled, that means we will create the IPv4 and IPv6 routers, IP tables, rules for the service. And the the issue can automatically or um, in intelligent to help the uh, users or client user or client to choose the right endpoint. That means uh, we have more smarter. I, th I think it's, it's it's smarter than the original. What are the next steps? I mean, uh, adding feature flags and, and try to merge it, or, or is there any major concern with this? Did we discuss the uh, impact on scale and I mean, how, how many listeners, additional listeners are generated? How, what is the cost and so forth? Did you do any scale testing? I mean, how, how, uh, how it impacts Istio CPU memory usage, Envoy memory usage, and others? Uh, for this part, uh, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm not uh, doing much in performance uh, test here, uh, but uh, but I think uh, we will do that uh, in uh, later. And the, of course, I will. Uh, I think I will contact with the learning user to do such performance uh, test, and, and maybe we. Uh, it will be great. If if they can provide this data to to us, yeah, that's the uh, next. To, to to be clear, I didn't mean performance. I mean raw IP speed. Uh, I, I meant uh, what if you enable this feature, what is the cost in CPU and memory usage for? Because you had, you generate additional configuration and both is your D and the agent. Uh, sorry, the envoy will have additional stuff to keep track of and additional objects to unserialize. So I want to to have some measurement before and after what is the impact so people know to increase CPU usage and increase memory and all the other settings they will need to do if they enable this feature. Uh, yeah, in fact, for the, uh, I, I cannot give you the optimize, optimization solutions, but I can give some initial, for the initial design dog, the de design solution. Uh, as you know, in the, in the initial design, uh, all of the configuration are doubled. So uh, they, they are some performance data is that uh, the consume, um, well, yeah, they are uh, 5%, yeah, 5% uh, increase in memory usage from my, uh, yeah. How if, can it, if it doubles that size, how can it be only 5%? Yeah. In, in fact, uh, it's just about the uh, it's about it's about this very simple uh, use case, yeah. And we all it, it means double, but not the all the double. It's just some listener and uh, rotor. But that, in fact, yeah. But you're talking about the original design, right? The new design it doesn't double it. It should just be adding one more IP address to the. Yeah, yeah. As you can see in the design doc, there is no double. It's just for it's there is just additional address or extra 
a extra source address for per, per listener or cluster, only just some field, add some field. No, yeah. no. So, so to, to, to make clear, I mean, the original design had this doubling and, and, and it was, you know, had a major concern about uh, scalability. This one is clearly better, but we still need to evaluate and to tell people it's 5%, 10% uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and to, to give guidance and to, to measure it because it's still significant change in terms of what we generate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Sure, and and for this part, uh, for the integration, uh, for the test uh, result, I will I will uh, I will give some result uh, after uh, after I uh, I do some test. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, besides that, I I also will fix on. I think we also will focus on the uh, dual stake things, especially for the headless and the self entry. Alex Xu also uh, focus on the drain out things for the headless. Yeah. Uh, one more question: DNS. Did you do any work on on the DNS uh, interception capture? Uh, is uh, the DNS capture fixed or working? Yeah, in fact, uh, I have do some uh, test uh, for enable the CNI of Istio. In fact, there is no uh, they uh, there is no impact uh, once I enable the D uh, CNI. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, we have we have a feature to, DNA, to do DNS interception in in agent. Agent has a DNS server inside, and I presume it will need to return AAA addresses as well. The IP disk address is when it resolves names. It's used for multi cluster and, all, and, and VMs and some other use cases. And I doubt it had IPv6 support. In... Okay, so you, you, you mean that for the some multi cluster and it's virtually have some VRMs. Yeah, for this part, uh, I think we need to support in, in future. Uh, there are some limit li limitations for the it's virtually for the bind. Config, am I right, Alex? Uh, I I don't think it's a big issue. It's just need to verify that it works and and add probably a few lines of code to to return the the v6 addresses. It should be very simple. Just just want to make sure we test it because it's very important for VMs and the code is in in is your agent. If you look, there is a DNS some DNS capture and then DNS is uh, is you you know we return the DNS results based on service entries and other stuff. Yeah, I understand that you use the VMs and based on the you use the VMs for the uh, self entry or group uh, worker group. Am I right? No, he's talking about the smart DNS feature um, that you have to enable additionally on top of using service entry. Mm. Maybe for this part, I think we need to figure out uh, what uh, really. Uh, in fact, I am not uh, still uh, not really understand the use case. Yes, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, Steve, I'll send you a blog. Sure, I know the blog on this. Uh, yeah, we just need to make sure that also works with IPv6 because a lot of our user are using uh, smart DNS mm -hmm. today. Oh yeah, smart DNS. Okay. Sure. I will. Uh, you, thanks, uh, Ling. And I think I will. I will try that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. I think many of us have to run. There's another MBA meeting going on soon too. So thank you so much, Steve, for presenting the thoughts and the demo. That's much appreciated. You're welcome. All right, thanks everyone. Bye now. Bye-bye.